When a company reports terrific earnings and its stock surges higher, I think it deserves more attention. Just take a look at Herman Miller, the maker of fancy office furniture and home furniture. They reported an amazing quarter last week, one that sent its stock up more than 8% in a single session. You probably know Herman Miller as the maker of the Aeron chair. It's the holy grail of seating for anyone who works in a cubicle. I have one. I love it so much. Although they have a lot of other products made by legendary designers and artists. You see it all on the website. Here's a company that you'd think would be doing very well right here, thanks to the boom in small business confidence. But even after last week's move, the stock is actually down slightly for the year. So we have to ask, could its recent rally be the beginning of a larger, longer-term move? Let's take a closer look with Brian Walker, the CEO of Herman Miller, find out more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Walker, welcome to Mad Money. Thanks, Jim. Well, Glad to see back. you. Good to see you, Brian. Now, Brian, I, when I go through your presentation, which is just awesome, I'm going to jump to number four on the list of five areas of focus. Deliver innovation. Herman Miller's never stopped innovating, but you've got some stuff now that I think is very 22nd century versus everybody else. Yeah, you know, innovation is really the heart of the company. It's right. really what makes the brand. It's what we do. We had a, you know, we launched here last year, right. the remastered Aaron chair. That was a great step. But recently at our industry trade show, we launched two things that I'm super happy about. One is we've entered the IONT field with a product that not only makes a desk pair with you and know you, but also pairs the chair to it. So imagine that you're getting up, you're standing and the desk automatically rises with you, but it knows if you're going to get a cup of coffee not to rise. So it starts to be almost like the interior of a car where the product starts to know you, grow with you, and it'll provide benefits to the facility owner or the company about what's being used, what's the activity levels of their people, are the right people sitting with each other. Right. So it'll begin to be a data play as well. And then the other thing we launched is a new chair by our Geiger subsidiary called Taper, which brought together the innovation and the engine of Herman Miller, if you will, with our Maharam textile company right. and the, the craft of our Geiger brand. So it's gonna be a phenomenal executive chair. And so our goal is to constantly keep moving the bar forward to make it harder and harder for our competitors right. and better and better for the users. I want to talk health because I think that this is the first chair. I have back problems. A lot of people my age have back. A lot of people have back. I, this is the only chair that really addresses my health. And if I were a gigantic company, which is trying to save on health care costs, not just the small business, but a gigantic, I would call you guys and contract to buy thousands of shares. Well, you know, that's one of the things I think we've always focused the most on is how do we make the user more comfortable and have more stamina in a seated position and to make sure that we're paying attention to the things that are going to make their lives better. And so while we make beautiful things, we think make things that last forever, mm -hmm. the real heart of it is how do we make things that make your life better, make you do your job better, make you live better. Right. Uh, and standing desk? Standing desks are, are all the rage. We're selling right. lots of them. And I think, you know, even if you go back to the original cubicle, Bob Probst originally had an idea of everybody should have a stand-up height and a sit-down height work surface so that you had the benefits of changing your posture. So it isn't about standing all day. It's about movement and change right. of posture. I'm glad you said that because some people take it to it. It's religious. It's not meant for that. It's 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. We Correct. know that. We have a tendency to do, you know, good, bad, black, right. white, and it's not that. It's in between. Right. I want to talk about consumer. I've always loved design within reach, but I've often felt it wasn't within reach of most people. Initially, there were some bumps, but it looks like you've now got this thing right. Well, for sure, the revenue side is really going. The team there did a great job this year. We launched over 100 new consumer products. We opened eight new or redesigned Design Within Each Reach studios, and our catalog program has really taken off. And I would tell you that's partially by some work we did with a consulting firm on how do we reposition the catalog, a much better job of targeting, and then we made a significant investment in e-commerce with Commerce Cloud from Salesforce. Right, right. And those four things really got the top I, line. I know the, the Salesforce guys love, love you. And always, Mark Bedioff loves you, the CEO. Now, uh, consumer confidence, where is it? Uh, because you're a great, ga uh, great gauge. Because you know what? If you're feeling good or your company's feeling good, what you do is you get a good chair. You know, we see the consumer being quite strong. Now, a lot of what's happening to us is there's this overall trend towards reurbanization, and our customers are an urban Reurbanization. Urban Think about how many people are moving back into yes. city centers. Yes. Not just, by the way, it started in cities like New York have had it for a long time, but now you're seeing it in Nashville and Charlotte and Detroit, that people want to live back downtown. And that's our customer, people who love design, who want to be inner city dwellers. And right. so that movement and where a lot of the job growth coming is, knowledge workers and people that are filling that part of the funnel. 
Those are the folks that are important to us. In, in your uh, website, I mean, I see people, a, a classic loft office is a Herman Miller target, right? No doubt about it. But at the same time, I imagine like a, a Wells Fargo, Beckham, I mean, these guys have to buy a lot of the government has to buy a lot of shares. Look at our largest customers still today are Fortune 1000 companies and things like the institutions like the government. We haven't been as good, to be frank, at the small business side. And that's one of the reasons that people misunderstood the DWR acquisition. Yes, we want to talk to people in their homes, but we also knew that people were going to buy those products for their offices. And the capabilities that came with DWR around e-commerce and targeting individuals, right. we thought would be a parlay into the small business too, longer term. Okay, yeah, it's very funny because your design is so classic, so sleek, so great looking. Someone said to me, oh, I said, I've you know, heard Miller and said, oh, they're, they're Danish. Meaning they, they just couldn't imagine that it's an American company because the stuff is kind of Museum of Modern Art, right? Now, now, how did it happen? Give me a little history because you were the furthest thing from Danish as imaginable. Yeah, actually, the company was originally founded by a gentleman by the name of D.J. Dupree. His father-in-law was actually Herman Miller. By the way, his original name was Herman Mulder. He changed his name because people didn't produce it, and he didn't think it sounded American enough. A uh, company was founded in, in Zeeland, Michigan, little tiny Zeeland, Michigan. Made in America. Made in America. The really interesting thing that DJ did that's probably maybe the most biggest underpinning of the company is he hit on this idea of really turning the company over to these great design minds who are outside of the company. You know, probably the most famous Charles and Ray Eames, but uh, right here in New York City, George Nelson. In fact, our yeah. offices in New York are now in George's old studio okay. building. And so that connection of believing that innovation came from really looking outside of yourself to solve problems okay. has been at the heart of the company since DJ really founded it. And you're talking about, you're shooting for organic revenue growth of 5% and a premium North American contract industry growth of 2.8. That would be remarkable if you could get that. This stock would be flying if you can do it. Yeah, you know, 5% is a pretty big goal, but it's we huge. think that, you know, we can get, we've got a lot of growth potential in DWR. We still see a little, little right. engine still going right. there as well as as we continue to build out the e-commerce side. We think the office furniture market this year is going to be in that kind of 2 to 3% growth rate. Um, we had a fairly light growth in that, that segment this past right. year. So we think we'll see a little bit of rebound there, um, as well as uh, we've been building out our international footprint. So we've been really you know, adept at kind of getting market by market. We now have manufacturing in both Europe and China. Right. We just right. opened in India. I saw the Chinese Posh. What is it called? Posh. Posh Factory? Is that the Chinese like the kind Well, of actually, Posh was an acronym. It was, oh, it was okay. actually a, it was an acronym for the project office of a Singhai Steel, and they used <laughs> Posh to make it easier to remember. Right. But that was kind of our entry brand into China. So now we have Herman Miller and Posh both right. operating in China. You know, we mentioned e-commerce at Salesforce. What you owe, everyone has to say, what's the relationship with Amazon these days after that day yesterday? You know, we're doing business on Amazon. We opened a store on Amazon last year. It's been good. Um, what we're really excited about with Amazon is a lot of search starts on Amazon. Yes. So you've got to be on Amazon, we believe, if you're going to really capture all the potential of the consumers and the small businesses that are out there. Has anyone ever complained? I, you know, I know you get input, but I mean, most people, when they sit in it, it's just a different experience. Does anyone ever say, you know, I want my old chair back? Uh, I would say that is very, very <laughs> rare. I would tell you, typically, Jim, when somebody complains, it's because it hasn't been adjusted properly. It's not fitted to them, right? I, okay. I had a funny thing where I was walking into a into a place that rents RVs. And a young lady was telling me she didn't like her chair. And I said, well, tell me why. And I got behind and I fixed it for her. And I, she said, who are you? I said, well, I'm the chair doctor. <laughs> there you go, chair doctor. All right, that's Brian Chair Dr. Walker, President CEO of Herman Miller. I have one of these. You cannot take it away from me. And I think the stock's going higher. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.